I got this uh, in the mail. Unfortunately, it arrived yesterday. I was hoping it would uh, get to me in time for me to to read it. Uh, you remember last week, uh, last Friday, we talked to Fiona MacArthur. She was in New Zealand, uh, and that too, I think, was a uh, romance writers convention, and the biggest. I think this one's global. Here in South Australia, uh, this weekend, I believe. Are you there, Fiona? I am indeed, Jeremy. How are you? I've been missing you. <laughs> I've been looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've got your book right here, and as I say, I, I didn't get it until yesterday, which didn't give me enough time to read it. It's called... <laughs> no excuse. <laughs> no, no. Back to, back to Birdsville, it's called. And Yeah. Um, is that you on the cover? No, not quite, not quite. She is a delightfully gorgeous young woman. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, very similar to my heroine. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you, when you uh, get to write a romance novel uh, and you can construct, probably not the right word, but you create the, the heroine mm -hmm. or, or the hero, mm -hmm. uh, where do you start? I actually always start with the first scene um, for a romance novel. So for a, um, a women's fiction um, romantic element novel, so a big one, I always start with the setting. So this time the setting was actually Birdsville and then I had a person coming into Birdsville and I didn't really know much about her at all. And All I knew was she was driving towards Birdsville and she'd left in a hurry 18 years ago. Aha. Uh -huh. And, and 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 then you can unravel or ravel the thing accordingly. Tell me, uh, Fiona, what um, what do you call uh, uh, what's a collective noun for romance writers? Uh, well, conference, <laughs> a gaggle, a gaggle, um, a romance a gaggle, of writers. Yeah, so I don't know. Actually, we're not a herd. We're actually a tribe. A Seriously. Tribe. We're actually all just all beating to the same drum. It's such an inclusive, warm, sharing thing that I've been going to 32 conferences and it is just where I go once a year to talk to my tribe. It is just wonderful. How many people have arrived in Adelaide to attend? I think there's about 450. Wow. Um, I've, I've been to an American conference and there was 2,000. So, yeah, Australia does it a little bit smaller and New Zealand does it that little bit smaller again. Yeah. I think there was about 130 or so at New Zealand. Um, but it's the, it's the quality of the speakers. I've been listening to a lady this morning who has 200 books and makes seven-finger numbers indie publishing her books. So just the opportunity to hear these amazing people is just, yeah, mind-blowing. Why do I think in, in my mind's eye that it is only women who write romance novels? Are there any men who write romance novels? <laughs> There are, but they're not here yet that I can see. There used to be a really famous duo. Um, Emma Darcy was Wendy and Frank Brennan. So she used to say that, you know, they made the best love scenes. She, <laughs> she was, yeah, they were just inspiring people. And they were at the first conference I went to, and I will never forget how amazing they were. And I'm like, one day I am going to be the person who's sitting up the front here, you know, where all the only the published authors could sit. And yeah. it took me 10 years. Years. And by the time I sat up the front 10 years later, everybody could sit there. It wasn't anything really special. <laughs> but I sat there. I was so excited. So, um, yeah, but, yeah, this at the moment I've just put out a book for um, Penguin Australia and it's a, a big feel-good coming home book. Um, but it's all about small towns. It's a deep dive into a small outback town. And though the people are fiction, the town is real. And I went to Birdsville three times, and every time I went, I loved it more. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just an amazing place. It's where the famous Birdsville races are. Yes, yes. <laughs> so Birdsville's got 110 people there that live there. Mm -hmm. And in, in the races, there's 6,000. And for the Big Red Bash, which is like a camping event 10 kilometres out or 30 kilometres out of town at Big Red, the big sand hill, hmm. they do this huge concert and they have 10,000. Wow, God. Right in the middle of Australia, yeah. which is, uh, it is just wouldn't incredible. Know what, wouldn't know what hit them. No, oh, well, they do. It happens twice a year and <laughs> they are so resilient. Yes. My goodness. This town, I, I went back to share with them the book launch because I was just so delighted with the help that I got. And I had 30 people out of that 100 
come to my book launch, mm-hmm. which is just amazing. So we had the local policeman, Stefan. We had the the nurse, Sue. We had um, Don, the National Park Ranger. Now, these are, these <laughs> we, are your characters or are they the, the real No, characters these are real that? people that were actually, yeah, in the book but not in the book. What well, They weren't. Right, but, right. Yeah, it was just yeah, it was really great fun. But, but you, I mean, the, you clearly draw from real life, though, don't you? When you, you you're putting, uh, filling out your characters. Absolutely. Well, you you just you just see the resilience, like the nurse. You know, the nurse drives off at three in the morning to answer a call, and the town she's going to is two and a half hours away at three in the morning on a rutted road, and the road is so corrugated that it shakes out her aerial, and she has to stop the ambulance, get out, search for this aerial in the dark, screw it back onto her car. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just they're just so resilient. I just love them so much. Tell me, um, uh, have you heard of a thing called the Love Lab? No. Talking about workshopping uh, love scenes. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- 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 I tried to get her on the program, but she said she couldn't do it. Uh, Dr. Mm. Kyo Bellick. Uh, mm. And it's called the Love Lab, and they have all of these people uh, who get together uh, in a in a sort of a, a scientific context, and it's speed dating. Okay, okay. Sp- speed dating for uh, intellectuals, or uh, okay, and, and they workshop various things. I'm told. Okay, and okay. Well, I, see, I wouldn't know about those things I, because I, I'm a closed door person, so you don't get to see inside my bedroom. No, but. <laughs> You, you're one of those writers that has, uh, you know, the thing gets awfully steamy and then you have a row of stars at the bottom of the paragraph. I do, yeah, next yeah, morning, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> or, or you have, in the movies, they have this cliche where they cut to waves crashing onto the beach. <laughs> yes, yes, from here to eternity, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, but very effective. I mean, it's far more, you can do more with your mind than they possibly can with the actors. Yes, yes. I always, I always say that you know you're not going to find any docking procedures in my books. So, <laughs> docking procedures. <laughs> well, yeah, it's very risky docking procedures because they do sometimes get it very wrong. I know, I know. But anyway, look, I, I really wanted to just talk to you about this this launch because you know. If you can just imagine it, there's a little bunch of people and we're in this room and we've got plastic glasses of champagne that I'd bought from the pub yep. and someone had shifted down for me. The nurse made all the cheese and fruit platters. The other lady that was helping had her desert photos around the walls. And it was just – my husband had never been there and they were just so welcoming and even the next morning took us out to the racetrack and got us to got me to take my book and they brought one of the birds or cups, actual big – brass cup and they put it under the winning post and I put my book there and we took photos and it was just the most delightful thing. Oh, it sounds wonderful. It was. I just felt, I don't know, really, really blessed to have those people treat me so warmly when I was writing about their town. But luckily they enjoyed the book. They yeah. loved the book. Well, as you say here on the front, it says uh, the small town with a big heart and an even yeah, it is. bigger story. <laughs> lots of secrets, <laughs> lots of things happening, lots of drama and lots of colour and beautiful outback scenery. So if you're the sort of person who likes that um, outback fun ride, then I think, you know, they'd really enjoy it. Strong women, honourable men and enough realism to know it's it's really – it happens out there. You've never been attracted to uh, move to the big smoke. You've, you're, you're more than happy living on the farm, I gather. Well, I do love the farm. I, I did my nurses' training in the city. I was a midwife for 35 years. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have lived in the city. But, yeah, I really like the space. Um, I like to be able to step away from people. Um, so, yeah, and I like scenery. I like taking photos of scenery. Ah. Yeah, so what, <laughs> yeah I've not a what, seas- hmm? So what's, Sorry. What, what's the next book going to be about? Well, have you ever been to Lightning Ridge? No, I haven't. <laughs> I've heard about it. To, I've heard a lot about it. You should it. go to Lightning Ridge. It is the funniest, most quirky, wonderful town. I wrote a book about it a couple of years ago. And, um, yeah, this is a, a, a book that's going to be set similar, ongoing. Mm, it's never, a bit of a sequel. You're never going to run out of ideas, are you? 
no, no, because I get so much fun going to a new place and, and talking to the people who live there and just soaking it in. I mean, Australia is so huge. It's so beautiful. It's, yeah, that's my thing. I just love it. And I'm just so fortunate that I have found this niche for me. Do you ever get a writer's block, sit there in front of the keyboard and nothing? <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> I really can't because I have deadlines. Yeah. But um, I only if I only do a, a couple of hundred words, that's fine. That counts yeah. on those days that are hard. Yeah. And they don't have to be brilliant words because you can read them today and say, oh, my goodness, that's just terrible. But don't delete them. <laughs> Leave them till tomorrow when you're in yeah. a better mood. And it's like, oh, actually, they're not too bad. I can do something with that. And that's what I find. So don't be too harsh on yourself. Just, just you know, a little bit forward every day and you're going to get there. Actors and uh, radio people are a little bit paranoid about this AI thing, artificial uh, intelligence. Yes. Are you are you worried that uh, as an author, they're going to somebody's going to come up with an algorithm uh, that, yeah. that that does it all? So Amazon's pretty flooded with a lot of AI stuff. It ha- to yeah. me, um, it doesn't have a lot of heart. I just wish that they'd spent all that AI stuff on something that would do my housework. That would have much better. <laughs> yes, yes, or wash the cars or something, yes. <laughs> That's right, mow the lawn. <laughs> so when, when, when does the uh, convention start? It's um, Oh, well, tomorrow? there's a workshop day today, yes. Yeah. And then tomorrow is the official conference and tomorrow night is the award ceremony. So my book from last year, As the River Rises, is up for um, a Ruby Award for the book of the year for Romantic Elements, which actually won the New Zealand Koru last weekend. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. I was so excited. I did not expect that. And it was such a delight. So I've got the little trophy sitting here on the bench winking at me, which is just delightful. <laughs> well, you'll do, make, it, make it a double. Make it a <laughs> I double don't know. this a, weekend. I would love to, but there's a, some pretty stiff competition this week. <laughs> oh, well. And there was last week too, so I'm, I think I've used up all my luck now. Is there much rivalry between you authors? <laughs> Look, you know, the romance industry is – I don't know whether because it's about love. Yeah. I, I just think that everybody is so it, – it started from those roots of Emma Darcy and those like-minded authors who just wanted to share. Yeah. And every year, you know, you go and talk to a newbie, you make sure people know have got someone else to talk to, you sit at tables where people you don't know. Everything's about sharing. And, um, yeah, the rivalry, it's – no, it's support. That's what we call it. Mm, fascinating. I'd love to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> I'm sure you would. (laughs) Next year we'll be in Hobart. You never know. Oh, well, look, wonderful to talk to you. I hope we keep in touch. Congratulations on your prize and the the wonderful book that you sent me. Very grateful for that. Thank you so much. That's just lovely, Jeremy. Thank you. I just love talking to you. You're very sweet. How many books have you sold? What was it, five million or something? (laughs) Three. Three million. Three million books. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Fiona, lovely, (laughs) lovely to have you on the show. Okay, thanks so much. Bye. All the best. Isn't she lovely? Absolutely beautiful. Fiona MacArthur.